<laughs> now, what do they call him? The Kung Fu King. But that bone-crunching, back-breaking action didn't die with Bruce Lee. There's now a worthy successor to his title and to his name. So you're about, as you're about to see, Brandon Lee is really following in his father's footsteps. Have a look at Brandon Lee. Ouch. <laughs> that was from the upcoming movie called Rapid Fire, which you welcome its star from Los Angeles, Mr. Brandon Lee. Great action stuff. Welcome to Australia, too. Oh, thank you very much. I'm really looking forward to being here for a while. Now, when did you start in the martial arts thing? Because your dad died almost 20 years ago, didn't he? Yeah, it's been almost 20 years. It's kind of hard to believe sometimes. Um, I started training with my dad really as soon as I could walk. I mean, my dad was a really diligent trainer, and he always had people over at the house practicing, uh, friends and students, and that was just how we played at my house, you know? Uh, in fact, I remember when I was a little kid, a lot of my friends didn't want to come over to the house because there were always these men out in the backyard screaming and breaking things, you know? <laughs> that was just part of the course, eh? Yeah, it's just the way things So, so I mean, were you two or three? Was it that sort I of was, age when yeah, you started? Yeah, about two. I have some, uh, my mom gave me some videotapes, you know, some old black and white Super 8 things transferred to video of me when I'm just a tiny little kid working out with my dad, so... It was a good time. Did you go formally? I mean, your dad used to make the point that he didn't have, when they said, uh, what degree of Kung Fu had he attained? He said, you know, the belt doesn't matter. What was the line he had about? He used to say that we use belts for holding up our pants. That's right. And then whether it's black or green, it doesn't matter. But uh, did you actually do it formally? Have you, are you a black belt plus or? I went on to train after my dad's death with his protege. So it was a real nice, uh, a real nice line to follow for me, you know, because I went on to continue training with the guy who was his senior student. And yeah, we don't have belts, but I mean, I think it's fair to say I'm the equivalent of a black belt because we have phases and I've progressed through those phases in my training. And your dad used to, uh, his, uh, his particular style was the amalgamation of 23 different martial art forms plus American boxing and wrestling and so on that he picked up. So in that sense, it's a East and West mix. Absolutely. He used to, I mean, he took, I have his books at home uh, with all of his underlining and his notes in them and it's fascinating to see where he drew his, uh, his, his sources from, you know, from what sources he drew. Uh, he's got books on Western fencing at home that he would use, on boxing. Uh, I remember he always used to say that you want to try and absorb what is useful, discard what is useless, and add what is essentially your own, you know, mm. and that was kind of his credo in creating Jeet Kune Do. Are you as obsessed as he obviously was with, uh, with, with the body being a temple in terms of not drinking, not smoking, uh, eating vitamins, fresh fruit, vegetables, those sorts of things? Do you do all that? Well, my dad uh, made a point at the time that he was training that there were a lot of martial artists who weren't paying enough attention to their instrument, you know, and certainly the instrument of the body is what you're going to be using in your practice of the martial arts. So I think it's very important to keep up the temple, so to speak. Do you accept the coroner's report that your father died uh, with a violent reaction to aspirin? Yes. Um, my father had what's called a cerebral edema, which is a burst blood vessel in the brain. and. Uh, it can be brought on, as can a stroke, for example, by a variety of things. Uh, my mother has written two very good books about my father's life that really lay the facts out for anyone who is interested, you know. But it sounds, I mean, I accept ex everything you've said, but it, it's, it, there's, a, there's a tragic irony in that, isn't there? That someone who looked after the temple, the body so, so carefully for so long, should then be killed by something as simple as aspirin. I think maybe that's why the the rumors you know which really to me are on the level of people talking about elvis still being alive you yes. know yeah. i think that's perhaps why so many of those rumors sprung up he was only 32 you know what, what's the craziest of those i mean certainly reports that he'd been killed by uh, secret to chinese gangs that uh, i really honestly you don't name keep it, up with them but you you name it it's been said about him hasn't yeah. it all right for you then was it hard for you you mentioned the fact that in your backyard uh, these men were screaming and shouting and you know going at each other was it as a kid at school i mean did, did you that were you put upon did people try and take you on as they do Clint Eastwood or there was always kind of a hired gun thing that went on I mean we came over to the United States after my father passed away and I started going to these different schools from Hong Kong from Hong Kong yeah mm -hmm. and um, yeah generally there would be 
two or three people at each new school I would have to kick the living hell out of, you know? <laughs> and, uh, and then after that, things kind of calmed down. By the time I got into high school, I really didn't have that problem anymore. And again, do you see the, did you see, as a, as a, as a school kid, did you see the martial arts as a, uh, not a defensive um, weapon, but in fact, you, you know, you go and attack, you, you, you hit first? I think, you know, you go through a period in your martial art training where it's kind of like having a new toy. It's not the end result of the martial arts. It's not how a responsible martial artist should behave. But, you know, when you're a kid and you're learning, I think you sometimes take advantage, you know. Did it seem natural, Brandon, for you to, to go into, into films then, given what your father had done, given your own skills, given the fact that, I mean, you're a good deal taller than mm -hmm. he is, aren't you? Yeah, well, my mother's Swedish. I see, okay. Yeah. All right, but he was only about 5'4 or 5'7. Five, 5'7, five, 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 seven. Five, seven, was he? Okay. Yeah. But, but was it a natural progression for you to go into films? Well, I, I always wanted to go into films. I didn't really plan necessarily on going into martial arts films. And, you know, and, and you, if, if, if with the work that people see you doing in the community, you can start to attract the attention of some real class directors and cinematographers and such, I think you'll get the chance to work, you know? Was it true or just part of the Hollywood folklore that, in fact, when they filmed your father in action, and perhaps yourself these days, they had to slow the film down because the, the oh, yeah. fist and the feet were yeah. going too fast? Well, that was back when he was doing The Green Hornet on television in the United States. And um, the thing of it was the cameras weren't as sophisticated back then. And literally, on television, they had to shoot it, uh, you know, they had to overcrank and shoot right. it in slow motion because otherwise it just looked like a special effect when he moved. I mean, the man was fast. He was deadly fast. I've really never encountered anyone in all of my training since who was as fast. Mm. You don't know why? I mean, it's mm. just one of those freaks of sport. Well, he obviously had, you know, great physical gifts, but he also trained assiduously. I think a tremendous amount of speed and reflex training is just muscle memory, you know, yes. and uh, he, he trained very hard. All right. Good. Yeah. Nice to talk to you. Rapid Fire opens in the U.S. shortly, I think in August. It opens on August 14th, yes. Okay, and then later in Australia. So mm -hmm. we look forward to seeing you here again. All right, and if you wouldn't mind, I'd just like to say hi to Lisa, my girlfriend, who's waiting for me back at the hotel. <laughs> A born romantic. Would you please thank Brandon Lee? Thanks, Daddy. Thank you. Thanks, Daddy. Instead of how of had their effect, it seems.